Oh, hi everybody. My name is Sena Tashkapaloğlu and I'm a theater artist. Theater is a way of telling stories, but of course, it's not the only way. There are many other options, and today we will going to work one of them. It's a stop motion movie. Stop motion is an animated filmmaking technique in which inanimate objects are physically manipulated in small advancements in between individually photographed frames. So, they will appear to exhibit independent movement or change when the series of frames are played back. In plain English, you will take a lot of photos and in between each photo, whatever you put in the frame, you will move it a little bit in advance towards an action. When you play them back, they will look like they are moving. You can almost call it a digital flipbook. Making a stop motion movie used to be very long and hard. But guess what? Now there's an app for that. Thanks to technology, we don't need to spend hours to create a small production. You can easily download a free stop motion app compatible to your smartphone. For this video, I'm using one called Stop Motion. Every free app has some features that you have to pay for. However, none of them are necessary to make your own films. It's great that we have this technology. It saves us a lot of time and effort. Also, it allows everyone to make a stop-motion movie. Great! Now is the hard part. What story will I tell? How am I going to find an idea for a story? And even if I have an idea, how am I going to build up a story? Those are all valid questions with simpler answers than you think. To answer all these questions, we need to find a team. The Secret Life of Daily Household Objects Yes, we are going to make short stop-motion movies featuring our daily household objects. But how? How did I come to this inspiration source to start with? Well, since we have been at home a lot lately, it's hard to find new stimulation to provoke our imagination. But if we can find a way to look at things around us with fresh eyes, they can be stimulating. The best remedy for monotony and boredom is to wonder. But what am I going to wonder about the objects in my house? I see them every day and I know them really well. If I'm going to make a stop-motion movie, I can start to wonder about how they would move if they move and what they would do when they move. Objects can move independently in a stop-motion movie, so they don't need me anymore. I can think that they have a life going on when I don't look at them. A secret life. Now I'm wondering about what they do, what they want, what they need, what they like. New questions to answer. But how am I going to answer them? The movement of the object that we pick around the house will answer those questions. So, let's start with the examination of some objects in order to be able to pick the one that inspires us the most. Let's look for some objects with moving components. Like scissors. How does it move? 
I'll try. Hmm, this movement appears to be very acrobatic to me. When the scissors are open completely, it looks like a jumping jack. Can I make it look like jumping? Maybe I need two scissors. One jumping up, one coming down. And I can use the contrast to emphasize the jumping. That looks fun. I like it. Is that the only thing that we can associate when we see the scissors moving? Everybody will take something different out of it. What else does it look like? It looks like a mouth. Oh, if it looks like a mouth, maybe it's hungry. I will give them some food. They seem to enjoy their tomatoes. Another object with moving components is a matchbox. It can move slower if I move it a little bit in between the frames and it moves faster when I move them bigger. The inside part also can get out of it. When I start with the smaller movement, it looks slow. When I change it to the bigger movement, it looks like it got faster. After that, the inside part is getting loose and the outside part is following it. After all that walking and running, it looks like a chase. And she got caught at the end. This is a good example of building up a story through movement. With this short stop motion movie, we already created a dramatic piece of story. It starts, develops and ends. Now let's look at the objects that can be easily shaped. I will try the blanket on the chair. Uh huh. Blanket knows where it belongs. We saw a reunion. So maybe it's a love story. What if it's not a reunion, but a disguise? Maybe the chair is using the blanket as a disguise. Or maybe it's cold. I don't know. What else can I find? Maybe this. It's a yoga belt. If you use a set with layers like the stairs, it's easier to make it look like it's moving in the space. There is something that we see in this one that is different from the other movies. It's not about the story, but the camera technique. When you keep the frame stable and keep moving the object, it will look like it's leaving the frame. It's giving the idea of them advancing in their move after they disappear. This creates a sense of curiosity in the audience. I can use it to build up my story. I want to try one last thing with objects that can be easily shaped. This headband has a wire in it. I can give it crazy shapes. I will try my chance with the lamp. This headband is reaching to the top of the lamp. When I started to examine the movement of the headband on the lamp pole, I realized that it looks like it's trying to reach to the top. So. Why not give it a purpose? They can light the lights.
This is a great example on how new ideas might appear along the way. It's very good because it means that your mind is open and active. Long story short, this is how you get creative with your approach to the matter. Moving on. After trying the blanket on the chair and the headband on the lamp, I'm thinking, what else can I find interacting with each other? This hat could be on a coat tree. A hat on a coat tree traveling remotely. Maybe the hat is taking a stroll around the coat tree just to get some fresh air. When the hat is on the top of the coat tree, it looks like it's wearing it. Maybe it will walk around the house. Could be anything that comes to your mind. Say yes to the first idea that appears in your head and give it a try. It might work perfectly well or it might not work at all. If it doesn't work, you always have another option. Just try again. I decided to add the coat. That way, it looks more like a person. And moving the arms of the coat gives me the opportunity to play with the gestures. There is another thing that I want to try when I think of the interacting objects. Clothespin and the rope. Hmm. This scarf is walking along the rope. Trying to find a nice spot to hang. Doing some exercises for keeping its great scarf shape. Trying to escape. Or maybe it's just trying to look around. Who knows? There is only one way to find out. To give it a try. I ended up trying this one with clothes. Oh, it's fun. What can I try else? More clothes? Why not? The dress is wearing the jacket. I don't know. It must be cold. Okay, something else. Magnets on the fridge. I can change their place and their position really easily. That way, they can interact with each other in order to build up a scene. Magnets are very suitable to use in a stop motion movie. You can use the fridge as your set, allowing you to create an abstract space, removing you from the confines of home. Also, you don't need to worry about maintaining continuity. Use whatever magnet you have and let them be your muse. Create scenes in a stop motion movie right in front of your fridge. Now let's take a look at the multiple objects. When you have two pieces, you can move them together 
or separately, towards the same direction or opposite. In this case, I move the candle holders all over around the pots. That way, we have a sense of space through a reference. Candle holders look like they are running around them. Great action, but what about the reaction? It's hard to do it with the candle holders. It would be easier with some moving components. I want to try a scene with the identical lamps. Their heads are moving. Let's see what it's going to bring. The moving head of the lamp changes everything and gives us more options to apply. Oh great, they look like they look away and to each other. When they light their lights, they look like they are talking. Here come my favorite objects, bunny sleepers. It seems like they hang around together all the time and they look like they're having a lot of adventures. I think I want to make a longer movie with them. I ask myself, what is my relationship to my sleepers? What incidents keep happening in between us? I lose them all the time. They must be hiding somewhere in the house. Ooh, under the drawers. I will definitely use this because I just like how it looks when they appear from under the drawers. I wish I could make them come to me when I need to wear them, so I wouldn't have to look around. Hmm, I like this idea. Let's give it a try. Oh, they're cute. I love it. And that makes me think, can they have other adventures? What if they get in trouble when they roam around? What they were doing in the movie? They were coming down from the stairs. Maybe they can fall from the stairs. Quite a trouble, huh? Let's see if it works. Oh, not bad. I didn't know they could open a drawer and get in. Cool. Careful, sweet bunnies. You were almost gonna get smushed. I started with one trouble and another one followed it immediately. I want to give you some tips to make your life easier while filming your story. Before you start filming, it will help to take your camera and do a once-over over the scenes you think you want. That way, you can make sure all the shots work the way that they are in your head. If you start with a horizontal screen, keep it that way till the end. You can also hold your screen vertical, but the movie always will appear horizontal. Wherever you decide to start from, you can open the movie with 4-5 frames of empty set so the audience knows where the adventure will take place and it creates an entree opportunity for the object. A sense of coming into the place. You can also start to take pictures of the object directly for a different effect. But however you start, Take 4-5 frames before you move anything in the frame. 
while taking every single photo, be mindful of your frame and try to catch the same frame each time. Before you start to move the object, it will help to think of the whole action first and do a run-through. After deciding on the object's actions, break those into the smallest movements possible. The object that you work with might have moving details. Move them in between each shot while you advance it within the action. This makes them look like they're alive. You can also cheat while you move the object. If a part of the object doesn't stay where you want it to stay, you can attach it with a pin or a clip or whatever you find handy. If you move the objects in small advancements, they will appear to move slower. And if you move the objects in bigger advancements, they will appear to move faster. Remember the matchbox. You could utilize different aspects of your home to create different effects. Stairs are a perfect example because they allow you to play with the space and the depth. In my movie, I put my slippers on the stairs. From under the drawers to the stairs, I needed to change my camera angle without cutting when the object reached the edge of the frame. To do that, I moved the camera around the slippers for four or five shots while they were stationary. This feels like we are following the object. After catching the angle that you need, you can keep moving the object in between the photos. When they climb the stairs, I keep the same frame, so they look like they climb on the screen too. It gives the audience a stronger sense of direction. Remember the yoga belt. When the sleepers leave the frame, I continue to take four or five more pictures of the empty stairs in order to create a dramatic tension using the element of suspension. After the sleepers go off screen, we don't know what happens to them. I decided to add an incident that highlights trouble out of the frame. This is then represented by the sleepers falling down the stairs. We don't know what exactly happens to cause them to fall downstairs. Maybe they got pushed by their evil twins or my cat chased them away. That's the beauty of the imagination. I'm leaving it up to the audience to fill in the blanks. Whatever happened at the top of the stairs scared the sleepers. Don't forget to take a couple of photos for the reactions so we can tell they are affected. They decided to hide in the drawer. I hope they feel safe there. But it means I can never ever find my sleepers again. Or maybe they will just come to me. Find the story that the object offers instead of trying to impose the story in your head. That's the most important part. Enjoy making a stop-motion movie.